And a very good evening to you. You're watching the news from the CYBC in the Kassir. Nathan Morley with tonight's top stories. President Anastasiades has said he is confident that Cyprus will get out of its current economic position. Anastasiades told the 15th Annual Congress of the DC Party that Cyprus will make it because he has the same persistence as the Cypriot people. He said that Cyprus is going through its most difficult time since the Turkish invasion and called all political sides to join forces in an effort to save the country. Anastasiades said the government is resolute in streamlining the state. He also added that he does not expect any additional terms in the loan memorandum with international lenders. He also dismissed a complaint by the Akel party about the way the government is treating its proposal to lead Cyprus out of the current crisis. He said that the party will have the chance to present its proposal at a national council meeting next Wednesday. Talking on the Cyprus problem, Anastasiades said the proposal for the return of Famagusta to its lawful citizens aims at giving Turkey the chance to show some good intentions. Foreign Minister Yanis Kassalidis said that the United States Secretary of State, John Kerry, will seek to personally get involved in efforts to solve the Cyprus problem. Mr. Kassalidis said it was made clear that the economic crisis is in no way interconnected with either the Cyprus issue or gas drilling. Mr. Kassalidis said he expanded on ways which could help create a better climate of mutual trust and could promote negotiations on some of the chapters under negotiation. Kassalidis suggested that Turkey should return the occupied city of Famagusta to its residents in return for direct trade by the Turkish Cypriots with the European Union. Mr. Kerry is reported to have shown an interest in the proposal and will have the opportunity to probe the reaction of the Turkish government next week. Kassalidis said that he and Kerry agreed that natural gas development can benefit all sides after a solution to the Cyprus problem. The National Economic Council met under President Anastasiades last night and discussed measures to lead the economy out of the current crisis. The Council advocated the termination of the structuring of the Bank of Cyprus as soon as possible and the lifting of restrictions on bank transactions. Measures to attract foreign investments and create job opportunities were also considered. The National Economic Council President said the meeting set down its mode of operation and procedures of communication with the President of the Republic. He also said the Council will prepare proposals on the energy, fiscal and monetary sectors and on development programs. Russia's Deputy Finance Minister has said that Moscow has not yet agreed to extend its 2.5 billion euro loan to Cyprus. He said that there has been a request to restructure the maturity of the loan and Moscow promised to examine it. He also said that any changes to the terms of the loan must be ratified by the Russian parliament. Germany had reported that Russia had both agreed to extend the loan and also reduce the interest from 4.5 to 2.5 percent. And an EU IMF document said that Russia's contribution to the Cyprus bailout was such a deal. Twin car bombs killed and injured dozens of people in southern Turkey in the town of Rehanli near the border with Syria. The Turkish Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan said that around 30 people were killed and nearly 50 injured. Erdogan said the explosions may have been related to the conflict in Syria or to Turkey's own peace process with Kurdish militants. The Interior Minister told reporters two cars exploded in front of the municipality building and the city's post office. There was no immediate claim of responsibility but the Turkish Foreign Minister Ahmed Davutoglu warned against testing Turkey's power. He told reporters in Berlin that Turkey's security forces will take all necessary measures. Spain is still in deep recession with unemployment reaching 27.2%, the highest in the Eurozone. Spain's GDP contracted 0.5% in the first quarter, mainly because of the sliding domestic demand. One of the most tragic aspects of the crisis facing the country is the repossession of homes as their owners are unable to pay their mortgages. The number of homes confiscated over the last four years has grown four times to reach 40,000 last year. Lenders applied to the courts to gain possession of around 14,000 houses which are family homes. 
A string of militant attacks and gunfights that killed at least 17 people cast a long shadow over Pakistan's general election. Millions still turned out today to vote in a landmark test of the troubled country's democracy. The poll, in which some 86 million people were eligible to vote, will bring the first transition between civ civilian governments in a country ruled by the military for more than half of its history. Early partial results showed the former Prime Minister, Nawaz Sharif, and the cricketer-turned-politician Imran Khan to be well ahead in the election. Pakistan's Taliban, who are close to al-Qaeda, have killed more than 120 people in election-related violence. The group, which is fighting to topple the US-backed government, regards the elections as being un-Islamic. A bomb attack on the office of the National Party in Karachi killed 11 people and wounded around 40 others. At least two were wounded in three blasts that followed, and many other explosions across the country were reported. The traffic police chief has said a motorist was caught speeding at 276 kilometers per hour. He revealed the incident at a press conference to mark the beginning of a campaign to curtail road accidents involving motorcyclists. He said that out of 235 motorcyclists killed over the past 10 years, almost half of them, that's 112 of the total, were under 25 years old. He said the main factor for road accidents involving motorcyclists is drunk driving, followed by high speed. And that's it for our news. Let's uh, take a look at tomorrow's weather forecast. Well, it will be mostly cloudy with more local rain and isolated storms expected. Winds will be light to moderate southwesterly to westerly, force 3 to 4. Turning fresh in the afternoon, though, in some areas, force 4 to 5. Now, the sea will be slight. Temperatures will reach 25 degrees Celsius inland and in southern and eastern coastal regions, 23 in the north and west and 14 degrees Celsius over the mountains. Join me for Saturday Live over on CYBC Radio. That's three hours of Golden Oldies. You'll find us on 97.9 and 91.1 FM. And we're back at our usual time tomorrow. From us all here at CYBC, good night.